Hey Empowered Christians, this is Brian Holmes, pastor and empowerment coach at Empowered Christian Ministries, and I'm glad to have you back with us. Today we're diving into section G of chapter 1, Understanding Free Will. If you haven't already yet, click subscribe and hit the notification button, and you can also check out the book that this study is based on, The Empowered Christian Roadmap, and you can click the links in the description below for all the different places you can get that. So we pick back up where we left off in the Empowered Christian Roadmap video Bible series. And we want to jump right in to section G in the first chapter, Understanding Free Will. So the point of chapter 1 is that we understand and see things with a biblical worldview, that we're looking at the, the world, the, the way in which we look at the world is through a biblical lens, right? So that's what all of chapter one is all about. It's, we're seeing these, these two destinations, we're understanding the purpose behind the entire process. So it's, we're getting the right roadmap, right? We see, we see the beginning from the end and we know what the destination is and we're, we're beginning to align ourselves up with the correct path so that we end up at the right destination. And what you're going to end up noticing is that God created this environment, this reality with which we find ourselves in for this very purpose, for us to discover who and what we love and what we want. So we're given this ability and this opportunity to love God or not to choose whether we want to love Him or not, to choose whether we want the same things that God wants or not. And rather than God just saying, love me, I created you and you have to. <laughs> you have to do it um, because I told you to do so. And I, and I created you and I can command you and tell you what to do. Rather than that, we actually have... Um, something very different, right? Uh, so rather than God saying, I created you and you have to love me because I told you to, which is, that's actually a similar view of God that Islam has. This idea, that's where the word Islam means. It means to submit. So this idea, this concept of God is one where, where they, view, they would view God saying, you have to submit to me and love me because I told you to do so, right? You, it's the, the highest um, form of worship is you submitting to God, right? That's what God wants. That's why he created you, so that you would submit to him. He, the, the reason you exist is so that you obey him. The reason that you exist and the way in which that you um, glorify him with your life is through submission. That's the highest value. That's, that's what Islam means. It's the highest value. By contrast, the biblical Christian worldview is very different than that. God creates this reality where, where you have the opportunity to choose what you want. It's, you know, so this is why we're embracing this concept of free will. God creates this reality, you know, even from the very beginning in the garden, we're, we're, Adam and Eve were already walking and talking and living in the garden with God. And God says, you can have all this, but don't have that. And we end up having this, this contrast between, do we love what God loves? Do we love him for who he is? Do we trust him? Right? Do we, are we willing, when God says, do this, don't do this, this is good for you, this is bad for you, do we trust that? Or do we want to create our own thing? Do we want to decide for ourselves what is good and bad for us? Right? So, this is, so, so God is giving us this opportunity to, to trust Him, to love Him, to, to become like Him by by uh, viewing him as the, the highest object of our affection, right? Do we want the tree and whatever it offers? Do we want to set our own course 
or do we see God as our highest affection? And rather than us submitting to God and this being our highest value of us just, um, God told me to love him, God created me, so I have to. Rather than that, God becomes human in the person of Jesus and dies for our sins on the cross. So he's, he's showing us who he is, showing us who he is. He's saying, this is, don't just see me as this far away God, this, this um, unknown uh, entity who's beyond understanding right this this um this vague idea of god that that can't be related to or understood or or loved um or loved by right he comes and he becomes very personal he steps down into our world he be, he takes on human flesh like us he walks this earth like us and he dies for our sins and says, this is who I am. This is, I'm not only just, I'm also loving. I'm not only uh, wrathful against sin, I'm also merciful against sin. I'm also uh, of, of sinning creatures. Um, I'm not only beyond understanding, I'm also knowable, right? I, I'm. I'm relatable, uh, you know, he, he gives us his Holy Spirit birthed inside of us in the new birth, and then this becomes a, a, an eternal relationship where we actually um, are, we're, we're deciding throughout this entire process, do we love God? Do we want to be like him? Do we, do we want to know God and be known by God? Do we want a relationship? Do we see him as our highest value and, and want that? Do we want to spend eternity with him or do we not want to? Do we want to become like him or do we not want to? Do we see him as our highest object of affection or do we worship ourselves or other things? Do we see him as the highest glorious being or do we give glory, our glory to other things? Do we, do we look at the cross and say, oh, my Lord and my Savior, I can't believe that you were willing to do that for me. Or do we, do, do we think of God as something very different than that? Right, the, in Christianity, the cross is the central theme. It is the, the Messiah is our everything. It is the pinnacle. The cross is the pinnacle of what God represents and who he is for all the rest of eternity. The, the moment of the cross will be the crowning achievement that demonstrates to the creation, to all of us and to the rest of the creation of who God is. It's his highest expression of his nature is, is exemplified in uh, what he did in the gospel, him, become, him lowering himself, becoming a man and dying for our sins in order to restore us to right relationship and have eternal life with him, right? This is, this, is who, this is who he is. And I'm sorry for my Calvinist friends, but in this section, um, I, am, I am really enforcing this idea of free will because I believe that this is something that he invites us to. That he, that he gives us the ability, God in his sovereignty gives us the ability to see who he is and then by contrast to repent and then put our trust in Jesus and, and give our lives to him. And I believe that that's an invitation that he extends to beings who are capable of freely making that decision. However dead in our sin we are, we're still capable of making that decision. And I believe the scripture does clearly teach that. It's actually kind of interesting and ironic that Pastor John Piper's quote that he's been using for forever, that God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. I believe that's a true statement. 
However, I, I don't even think it's, it's truly f realized its full potential in a Calvinistic type of theology because in Calvinism, God is the one who gives you the, the ability to even make that decision and respond in the first place. Whereas if God is the one doing that for you first, then how can God be most glorified in beings who are most satisfied in Him when they aren't even freely capable of having that satisfaction in Him, right? We have to, even in our fallen state, look to God and see Him as the object of our affection and see our fallenness and be convicted of our sin and repent and put our trust in Jesus and, and then see uh, this opportunity to have eternal life with God and be most satisfied in Him, right? So that's the reason we're given this free will ability to even respond, right? And, and our, our ability to do that is, is crucial to us being able to say that's, that's, that God is who I want. God is the object of my affection, right? I want my heavenly father. And if God has to do it for us, then it's, then how would he be most uh, glorified in us coming to that conclusion when he's the one who causes it in the first place? Rather, I think he gives all of us the ability to, to, recognize this on some level. Now, obviously, we're sinful and we do need to have some level of conviction and repentance before this can happen. But I believe that that conviction, um, you know, the conviction can come from God through His Holy Spirit. And then our decision to repent is ours. And our decision to put our trust in Jesus is ours. And then the new birth and so on. We're going to get a lot deeper in this in the next section, in section J. But for right now, I just want to emphasize that I do believe we have free will. And I believe not only do we have it, but it's an essential part of why we even exist. Why we've been given life. Why we have this opportunity. Why God allowed the fall. Why God allows the transformation process to happen slowly the way that it does because we're consenting to this we're we're coming into agreement with god that what we want is the same thing that what he wants right and and by us coming into this agreement we enter into this into this opportunity so first the invitation is extended and then the opportunity and that leads towards the path of eternal life so god is not causing us to be new and alive and then we can't just help but see that he's good Rather, he gives us the ability to see that he's good. He gives us this ability to see this and then respond to him through our free will. So you've been given the ability to make this decision. And God wants you to use that to show what your heart's true desire is. And we'll get a lot more into this in the next section, H, understanding good and evil and then in the next section after that i what do you want so for right now understand that the opportunity is laid out for every single human being to respond and it's up to us as evangelical christians to give everyone the opportunity to decide that they will repent and love the things that God loves and love God by extension because he is the highest good. So until next time, have an empowered week.